Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna to talk to anyone who might be one of the 5 million people invested in the government TSP. If you don't know, that stands for Thrift Savings Plan. It is the government's equivalent of the 401k. I'm, I'm making this video today because we got our 2019 annual statement in the mail and I need to tell you guys a story and come clean about a huge mistake that I made. If you don't have mailed statements activated, you can go on the TSP website and look at your quarterly or annual statements every year. Here is my statement for 2019. And I don't claim to be an expert. I've only been contributing to the government TSP for about a year and a half now. And if I'm, I'm putting a significant amount of my money there, I want to understand how it works. So I made it my mission last year to really understand, you know, investing and in finance and the stock market more. So I made a couple of videos that I uploaded about four or five months ago. You should check them out if you want longer, more detailed videos. And once again, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert, uh, but I felt like I had a strong enough grasp on the TSP where I wouldn't make a mistake. If you want the extremely simplified uh, rules, put everything in the C or S fund, that is US stocks, and then put in as much money as you can. The contribution cap every year is, uh, this year it's gonna be 19,500, and then don't look at it. Don't, don't change anything. Don't do anything stupid or crazy. Stock market goes up, it goes down, you don't care. Uh, don't, don't look at the money until you're getting close to retiring, and if you're, close to retiring and you're happy with the amount you have in there, you can then start transferring it to uh, bonds, either corporate or government, in order to protect it from, you know, like a temporary downturn. But there's one other thing about the government TSP that you can do, and it's called swing trading. And basically, that is the belief that you can time the market and you are somehow smarter than other people. Uh, and yeah, I, I was interested and I, I made a video about it and at the end of the video, I basically recommended to people not to do it. I said, I don't think I'll do it again. And, and sure enough, I, I didn't take my own advice and I ended up doing it again like a month later. The basics of swing trading in the government TSP is you wait for basically a local high where you think the CNS fund are higher than average and then you sell. So you sell high, you then wait for the C fund or S fund to go down in value uh, for whatever reason, and then you jump back in. So you buy back in, you sell high, and then you buy back in uh, at the same dollar value basically, but you're earning more shares. And then when the stock market recovers, your increased number of shares uh, then grow at a faster rate. However, everything that I've read, everything that I've watched, everything that I've been told is that this is a terrible idea. Nobody can time the market. And the longer you try, the worse the odds are that you'll come out ahead. When you think about it, when you invest in like an S&P 500 index funds, you're just getting the market average. And the average is pretty good. However, if you're not happy with the average, then you can uh, try day trading, swing trading, or picking individual stocks. The problem with doing this is that you're in competition with everybody else in the free market, buying and selling uh, shares of everything. So I, as this you know know-it-all uh, Air Force officer, you know in my 30s, I thought that I, I was smart enough where I could be in that 20% of people that can do this successfully. Even though I'm competing with Ivy League graduates, you know, people who have been trading for 30, 40 years worth of experience, supercomputers that trade on, the, on behalf of other people, to think that you can outsmart these people or outmaneuver them is pretty naive. So even with all of the advice that I uh, received, you know, from books that I've read, videos that I've watched, even when I passed that information on to other people, I still wanted to try it. I still wanted to think, hey, am I, you know, that exceptional small percentage that can actually do this successfully? And I wasn't. If you look at my PIP on my annual statement for my personal rate of return, it was 18.47%. Now, some people would say, holy cow, 18% in one year, that's fantastic. Except it's not because the C fund last year averaged 31%. So if you just put everything in the C fund and then ignored it the entire year, your PIP would have been closer to 31%. But because I was messing around with it, jumping in and out of stocks uh, between bonds, I screwed it up and I lost more than 10% of my potential earning value. 
If you're confused and you don't even know what the C fund is, the C fund stands for the Common Stock Index Fund. It's the S&P 500 Index Fund. When you invest in this fund, you invest in a fund that owns shares of America's 500 largest companies, Ford, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft. So even if one company has a bad year or fails, like Blockbusters or Sears, you don't care because you have 498 well-established companies to carry on your investment. The S fund stands for a small cap index fund, and that's basically every company that's publicly traded that isn't in the S&P 500. So it's the other 2,000 or so smaller companies. That performs basically just as well. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if you're in the C or S, they, they perform about the same. All right, let me tell you what happened. In my infinite wisdom, I was watching the stock market around November 1st. And uh, once again, the C fund share price and the S&P 500 index fund uh, number, aggregator number, they, they, they correlate. So if you wanna track what is the share price in the C fund doing, you just Google S&P 500 and then you can, you can track it on Google. So on November 1st, uh, the, sh the, uh, the, the price of the S&P 500 was 3,066. And you know, if you look at it, it was going up, it was going down, it was going up, it was going down, up, down. I thought that maybe I could time it on an up and then uh, buy back in on a down and just snag like an extra percentage or two. And I thought, whoa, 3,066, that's a, that's a local high. That's an all time high. I'm gonna jump out now. So I logged on the TSP website. I had at that time 277 shares of the C fund. I sold it at the share price of $44.70. Total value only, only $12,394. However, if you've been following the stock market the last three or four months, you know what happened and it, it's, it's basically broken. It only goes up now. So I thought this was the all time high, good time to jump out and then try and jump back in. And it's just been going up, up and up and up, up and up. This little dip here is coronavirus. Uh, for swing traders, I'm sure they were getting a little excited saying, oh, this is, this is, this is the time, it's gonna, it's gonna crash, it's gonna tank, we can buy back in. And nope, it's, it's back up. So on February 12th, I finally decided to give back up and buy back into the C fund. Uh, the S&P 500 had already increased by 10.2% at this time. The reason why I made this decision is because it's gone up so much, there's a potential it might never go down again. You know, let's say you were a swing trader who traded out when the S&P 500 was 2000. Is it ever gonna go back to 2000? Probably not. It, it could, you know, in the next decade, we could see a financial disaster where the stock market loses 50% of its value. But there's also a chance that might never happen again. So to say, I'm gonna just be stubborn and stick with it and stay in the G fund forever, it, it might never go back down, who knows? Once again, I am not a financial expert, so I can't guarantee to you exactly what's happening, but I've been reading these very bizarre articles where because of coronavirus, the Chinese government just injected $200 billion into the market to stop it from going down. Uh, likewise, I don't think quantitative easing here in America has ever ended. We, we print mon money like there's no tomorrow. Uh, the, federal interest, uh, re the Federal Reserve really should have raised interest rates by now to control inflation, but they don't seem to ever want to do that anymore. So interest rates in America are, are, are all-time lows. Money is cheap to borrow. It's, it's very possible that the stock mar market will go up another 30% this year. So on February 12th, I bought back into the C fund. For simplicity, let's ignore the small amount of appreciation that I got while sitting in the G fund for three months. And let's say, let's take that identical $12,394, buying back in now at the higher share price of $49.52. I then, uh, I'm, now, I'm now holding uh, 250 C fund shares. The reason why this screenshot doesn't match that is because the contributions that I've been making the last four months, I was still buying C shares. I only swung out my existing balance, but I'm still contributing to my TSP every month, and I chose to keep buying C, C fund shares. So here's a summary. On November 1st, I had 277 C fund shares. 
uh, at the share price of $44. Uh, I then conceded and I gave up and I, I bought back in and I'm only getting 250 C fund shares now at a share price of $49. So I net lost 26.9899 shares of the C fund. Multiply that by the value on February 12th, and I lost $1,336 doing this. Now, yes, I can think of it just as that loss over the last four months, but what did that loss cost me over my lifetime? When you, when you invest in a retirement fund that's going to be accumulating uh, interest and value over decades, it is useful to think of it this way. So let's go ahead and toss that $1,300 in a compound interest calculator. And if I was earning 10% in the C fund over the next 24 years, my lifetime loss for making this mistake was over $13,000. Was it a valuable lesson to learn? Sure, yeah. Uh, am I gonna do it again? Hopefully not, we'll see. Now it's this point in the video that I need to clarify that the C fund does average over 10%. I always get comments in the you know in the comment section of my video saying you can't get 10% in a mutual fund, index fund or retirement accounts. Yes, you can. Uh, so if you go on the TSP's website, we have 32 years worth of data, 32 years worth of averages and the C fund averages over 10%. You can also go on this website called TSP Data Center and you can look at what the percentages were for returns. You know, the C fund uh, earned 30% in 1991. It earned 37% uh, in 95. Yes, the dot-com bubble and the September 11th attacks, it lost 9%, lost 11%, lost 22%. So it's had rough years, but it also has just, you know, incredible explosive years. Uh, for example, in 2013, it gained 32%. Nobody thinks about the great economic boom of 2013, but everybody remembers the economic collapse, you know, the, the, mini, the mini depression or whatever it's called, the great recession of 2008 when the, the S&P 500 lost 37% of its value. And yeah, in 2017, the C fund was up 21%. In 2008, it lost 4%. And in 2019, it gained 31%. So the average, the long-term average of the S&P 500 index fund is over 10%. So I'm gonna close this video by just reiterating what I've been taught and what I try to teach others is put everything in the CRS fund, ignore the markets, contribute as much as you can, don't think about it, don't look at it, don't worry about it until you're close to retirement. And then if you're happy with the amount you have, you can start transferring it to bonds. And that's how you become a TSP millionaire. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. If you have any comments or questions, uh, you can check out my other videos or leave me a, a comment down below and I'll try and respond. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. I talk about military and finance issues. And until the next video, take care.